to as well, and then you'll be seeing it too. So funny, it's like the Hippie Anonymous with glasses too. I love it. And you got your hippie earrings. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Jay is here from the Gallery Expression of the Smoke and Mirror Show. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm on a Truth or Girl channel. I don't know if it's going to make the final cut. I'm very excited to be on her lens. I love the Truth of Girls. I love Sonia and what she does. And check it out. We're uh, rocking the infringement. 2012. It's going down this year. Occupy your mind. I like it. Yeah. Did you make that? You better occupy your mind or else uh, someone else will. Yeah. And, and you're doing a, you're doing something. Yeah, I'm going to do a comedy bit. I'm going to do a set and some, some comedy. Jake, Talk about some very tragedies. Funny. Tragedies. But yeah. knowing you, it's going to be funny. That's the plan. <laughs> Okay, good. So there's a couple things I want to talk about tonight. Uh, one of them is food and, and health. I think it's very important that we eat healthy, and I find it's more and more difficult to be healthy nowadays. And just to give one example of it, you know, it may be about you know two o'clock in the morning. You're trying to find a place to eat. Happens to me a lot. And some of my friends maybe have different choices than me, you know. And they're like, Hey, man, look, there's a McDonald's over there. Let's go, McDonald's. Let's do it. And I'm, um, I'm that guy who's like, uh, I don't need a McDonald's. And I, I always get this look, like I'm being snobby when I say that. <laughs> like they're like, what, you're too good for McDonald's? You know, it's good enough for me, it's not good enough for you? And I'm like, I just don't fucking like that shit. I, I don't think it's real food. That's all. I don't eat it. It's not about a judgment call. I just don't fucking like it. And I feel like if I said I was a vegetarian, that people would respect me more. People, people understand that. People are used to that, you know? You're a vegetarian, okay, we'll find somewhere else. So now what I do is I tell people, I say, look, I'm a, I'm a fooditarian. I only eat things that's food. <laughs> Becoming very difficult. We, we cannot control the complexity of the people that have mental problems. We can't do that anymore. Truth Fairy, <laughs> la fée de la vérité. It doesn't have the same ring in French. <laughs> All right. The, I did say truth, not tooth. <laughs> Although some of you may be losing teeth, but anyway, I'm not here for that tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to tell you a little, a little bedtime story. A little fable from a long time ago. Well, actually, not so long. It, it's about a place far, far, well, actually, it's not that far. And it's about a very evil king who ruled the land not so far away. And the king had a very devilish plan, which was to control all of humanity. And so he set about implementing his plan step by step, being very organized. And so let us start the story. I'm going to do a little illustration. <laughs> <laughs> you are here. <laughs> and this, this is the, the evil king. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So he started a plan to rule the world. And it started with the day the children were born. When they were born, he convinced their mothers that they would be safer giving birth in a hospital with doctors. And the result was that one third of the babies were ripped out of their mother's stomachs. It was a good start for the king, not so much for the babies. And then the next thing he did was had them register the children so that they would be slaves of the state forever. <laughs> and he was very happy that they all went along with the plan. The next step 
Oh wait, here's your birth certificate, which you traded on the stock exchange and made lots of money. <laughs> the next thing he did was he convinced the parents that for the children to be healthy, they had to have injections of neurotoxic metals, detergents, endocrine disruptors, polysorbate 80, foreign <laughs> animal proteins, neoplastic human cells made from aborted babies, and did I leave anything out? I mentioned the mercury, and some other junk. And somehow he convinced everybody that this was true. And he also convinced the adults that they needed some of the cocktail too to be healthy, the flu shot. And if anyone asked any questions, he would just say, there is less mercury in a flu shot than in a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and they all said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing he did, well, here was the problem. All the children, they, well, they all started to get sick. Okay, they, they all, they all started to get sick. And everybody said they had no idea why. It was a mystery. Couldn't be the poison, but no. <laughs> it was the tuna fish sandwich. And then what did he do? Well, as the children grew, it was time to educate them. So he made these wonderful schools in these grand buildings where they would receive an education that would magically make them dumber. <laughs> it was wonderful. And if they managed to get through the first step of their indoctrination, I mean, no, education. <laughs> then they went on to the great respected universities with ivy on the walls and football games and pub crawls and whipped cream all over the place. <laughs> and they continued, and if they did very well at university, where they learned that the twin, for example, they didn't learn this exactly, <laughs> they were taught to think in a way that would have them believe that 210 story buildings were really nothing more than a plate of pancakes. <laughs> If, if they made it through, they got a cube on their head. Oops, I did it the wrong way around. It's been a long time since I got my cube. So they, 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 this is supposed to be graduation hat. Then they would graduate. They had the official seal of brainwashing from the highest orders of the state and the government. And they gained a tremendous amount of respect. Yes, doctor. Yes, professor. And then these people went on to sell things like this. And then not everyone graduated. Some people had to go work in factories. Eventually, the factories were all moved to China, and then they had to work in call centers. And then eventually the call centers were moved to China. And then Ontario reversed some prostitution laws. A whole new job market opened up. <laughs> And so, some people who still had what they called jobs, which, which was another part of this, where they taught you not to think too much. And you worked in something called a cubicle. Actually, he wouldn't have this look on his face without maybe a martini, <laughs> or worse. So, here, let's give him a joint in his mouth and lighten up his day a little. Nice. All right. <laughs> oh no, now he's a criminal. <laughs> he was a bad egg anyway. Asked too many questions. Well, he kept them in their boxes and he told them that if they just did everything right like they had been told and they worked and worked and were good slaves and just held out and when they got to 50 they said I can't take it anymore, got that, I'll fucking lose my mind <laughs> and they wanted to get out of that cubicle, said, no man, just hold, well actually he didn't talk like that, he said, that's this guy, he said, 
No, you must stay the course and you will have social security. So these poor fuckers stayed in their cubicles. <laughs> and said, yeah, another five, ten, five years, and I'll have a social security. And so they finally retired. And by that time, unfortunately, because meanwhile, he had also, as Jay explained, poisoned all the food. Well, like, here's your shreddies or whatever. <laughs> I, he poisoned the food. He'd also poisoned the water with some fluoride, which was supposed to be good for your teeth, but it turned out that uh, it wasn't so good. But by the time he made it to retirement, and he was looking like this, and he had his TV here, you know, we've been his old faithful who'd been getting him through all the long years. Uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, and let's not forget, I made it to this far, and then you know what, there was a good chance that within six months, he wouldn't be on the golf course, this was his dream, his dream all these years, this is a golf course, nah, he's probably in a fucking retirement home somewhere overlooking the freeway at $400 a month. Yeah. Or maybe dead. So that was kind of a drag. And then when he died, well, um, they taxed him for it. So you know, and and all along he'd been waiting for that day, that glorious day that he'd been promised, and he'd given all his money to the bank. Meanwhile, the bank had stopped using real money and was using fake money and giving people fake money and then charging them more for having borrowed it and somehow destroyed the economy. And um, basically, they lived unhappily ever after. <laughs> except, for, except for the ruler of the kingdom who um, just collected all their money and I guess laughed his way to the bank. And um, and that was the story of the one-eyed man who was king of the world. Fabulous story. It could never really happen, right? No. Well, enjoy your evening and sleep tight, children, and sweet dreams. Yeah. Sweet dreams, everyone. Jews harp. <laughs> He's hiding now. Yep. He's like avoiding the paparazzi. He sounds like a grasshopper. I, yeah. I love that instrument. It's so cool. So what did you think? I had a great time. <laughs> and I like the truth fairy. I think she's very delightful. She's someone that I'd like to see more of in the future. Hopefully, maybe even influencing the children. Maybe she could do some, make some apparitions in, in uh, kindergarten classes and, and plant some seeds for the young. <laughs> yeah, ne maybe next time I'll bring puppets. <laughs> So yeah, it was a smashing success, and uh, thanks for watching, and 